What's going on guys? You guys already know what it is from the title of this video. Yes sir, Travis Dermott, aka Travi Claus. Yes, one of my favorite players on the Leafs. Got re-signed, finally, repping the Leafs jersey to a one year, $874,000 contract, my bad. Um, that's the cap hit, one year, and oh my goodness are we gonna break this down because I've been waiting for this day, and I've been waiting for this day, but I will say this before anything. Kyle Dubas, I will guarantee you 100% watches these videos. Because every time I make a prediction, he finds a way to just undermine it. Look what happened to Ilya Mikheyev. I said he was going to get signed for one more than, uh, uh, what do you call it, 1.6? Or 1.66? He signed him for 1.665. And now... Travis Dermott, I said they're, they're, they're going to sign Travis Dermott, but there's no way they're going to get him uh, for like cheap, right? They're easily, he's easily going to be in the millions, so they're going to have to trade someone. And what does this man do? What does he do? He signs him for under a million dollars. He 100% watches these videos. I am fully convinced. Fully convinced. Um, anyway, yeah, let's just break... Yeah, 50 viewers. <laughs> okay. No need to, no no need to hit it, hit it hard. Chill, Ilias. Uh, I love how it's come to a point where Ilias is just roasting our own thing. It's not even. All right, let's just get into it. Travis Dermott, um, my boy, resigned, and wow, did he take a team friendly deal on this one? Um, let's break everything down. Okay, let's just start with uh, his stats. Uh, Ilias, you got those pulled up? All right, yeah. So. 17, 18, 13 points, one goal, 12 assists, 37 games. Rookie season. Not a bad, not a bad rookie season. Rookie season, defenseman, not bad. Yeah. 18, 19, four goals, 13 assists, 17 points, 64 games. So minus five, a little off year. Fair. Yeah, sophomore year. And then 19, 20, four goals, seven assists, 11 points, 56 games, plus 14. A little yeah. better. A little better. So let's, let's talk about this. So, when Travis Dermott first came into the league, uh, we're talking about uh, 2017, um, there was a prediction made by me, and usually with these predictions, I kind of get them kind of spot on. Like, I usually get a pretty good, like, pretty good result on these statements. Um, I and once made a statement, Nate Schmidt's going to be one of the best defensemen in the league in his rookie season, and now he is. Um, and he's going to continue to be even more. But I also made a prediction about Travis Tournament that has kind of not been true. Um, I predicted from what I saw in his uh, rookie season, I thought maybe he could be a top six defenseman in the league one day, or at least he could be a top six defenseman for Team Canada. I was wrong. <laughs> I, I, I will admit that. Um, I just The reason I think that is because of what I see from him on the ice. Not so much... Um, about the points, the way they play, right? Yeah. In his rookie season, he came up, he was a smooth skater, moved the puck really well, uh, made lots of good passes, had hands, um, and he actually knew what to do. Yeah, and I think he was honestly solid in his own zone as well. Getting yeah, exactly. So there was like, oh, and I was like, oh, wow, this is his rookie season. So like, think about how much he can grow. If he continues to grow, he definitely will be one of the best players or one of the best defensemen. However... It was too overhyped, I think, in my opinion. Um, I just overhyped it a little bit. He did not live up to that expectation. Um, mm -hmm. Now, why? I have an idea of why. Um, I think it's because it has something to relate to with Mike Babcock. I don't want to just blame him. I don't want to be that Leaf fan just blames Mike Babcock for everything. But in this case, I just think that Travis Dermott wasn't confident with himself. Right, and I think a lot of times, you know, he's he's one of those offensive type defensemen, right? Let's not kid ourselves here. He's an offensive type defenseman with the skill he has. Under Mike Babcock, Mike Babcock usually likes to first teach his all young offensive defensemen um, defense. So for the longest time, when he first came to Toronto, when he was working with Morgan Riley, he did not let Morgan Riley be on the power play. He said you could be on the power play once you learn how to be on the penalty kill. And Morgan Riley, I think reacted to that a little differently than Travis Dermott. I think Morgan Riley kind of understood um, and went along with it, and now he's developed to a good defensive and offensive um, player. Travis Dermott, on the other hand, I think 
was starting to doubt himself a little. I could I could see it every time he had the puck. Um, his sophomore year and uh, in 2018, 19, and 1920, he, he, there was just that like bit of hesitation for him. Like he always doubted himself a little bit that I didn't see in uh, his rookie season in 2017, 18. I thought he in that season he was just he, he came in full confidence, made insane passes that you could have said, oh maybe be your it's maybe a little risky, but they were insane passes. He pulled them off, and even to this year, like I, this year. Um, I think I remember one of his assists was a long, um, like, saucer pass from his own end to string a breakaway. This season? Yeah. I don't remember what game it was, but, like, he has that skill. He has the skill. And he even had that rush when he came back from injury this year. Um, I don't know if you remember Elias, but he had that one rush, came back from injury, and went through two two guys. I don't remember what team they were playing against, but he went two through two guys. Uh, didn't score. He got, like, a shot off it. But my point is he has hands. Yeah. He has skating. And he has a pass, and he can play defense. But I think for Travis Dermott, it's less about skills and more about mentality. I think his mentality hasn't been there as much as it should have yeah. been. And I think also he needs to he needs to like find a role. Like he hasn't found a solidified role with the team. Yeah, I agree. I think I think he was on that way to a good role um, in uh-huh. in uh, in his first season, but I think he, he kind of like lost himself a little. Um, yeah. This, these We're not saying it's horror guys, so like you can still turn out. This is a young player, right? How old? How old is he? He's only twenty three. Yeah, he's a young player, so he has lots of time to figure this out, and I think he will figure it out. I'm yeah. going to say this: I don't know if he'll be a, one of the best defensemen in the league. Like, I don't think he, I don't know if he'll make Team Canada, but I will say that I think he's going to have um, great seasons going forward. With that being said, I think it's all up to him at this point. Um, this deal, as much as I like it with the with the cap term. hit, with the cap right. hit, I don't love the term. Oh, one year, right? Yeah. So I meant the cap hit. Yeah, That's because yeah. one year for me, this guy, yeah, so Travis Sermon's going to have his breakout season. He's going to. In my opinion, it's it's set. He will have a breakout season. I think he's he will have a season where he scores 20 goals as a defenseman. I think that will happen. Um I, I think people are under... I know a lot of people are going to be questioning I don't know about that. 20 goals. I, I, I don't know if it'll be with the Leafs. I don't know when it will be. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I, just, think, I think once in, at his career points, right? So yeah, I'm saying in the next like 10, 12 years, he's going to score 20 goals. And I think he is worth way more than his, con, with, than his cap hit. And I think yeah. he knows that. That's why the term is so little. Um, yeah. Well, this, is a, this has to be the season of short if he wants to get paid. Right? That's what worries me, right? I think he... I, yeah. I, usually when I get one year deals I always worry about the next year um, yeah. so with Travis and usually like so far this year the one year deals has have kind of been with like you know like Jason Spezza or Joel Thornton, Thornton. yeah you know so I've been like kind of okay Bogosian. with Bogosian like I've been kind of okay with those but Travis Sermon's a good young player um, I think he's still going to be an RFA next season so but you're going to have to pay him next season I think I think he will earn his keep this season um, and he will have a breakout season eventually, and I think he'll have a great season this year. I think maybe under Keith he could find his mentality back. Um, I don't know. I maybe under this new Leaf team. I don't know if you'll, you can call it a new Leaf team, uh, but like this new mentality Leaf team that's kind of going into this year. Um, yeah. Maybe he could find a stride. I don't know, but I know he has the skill to be one of the best players when he sk- when he steps on the ice. He reminds me. Of uh, Nate Schmidt, which is kind of the modern offensive defenseman right now, um, and I would not be surprised that the young Nate Schmidt. Right? Yeah, and I think where does he fit in the lineup? Well, we gotta see what he's gonna play. Dubis says he wants him on the right. right? Yeah. So where does that? I want him as a top four defenseman, but I don't think he is right now, right? Yeah, I agree. Okay, so our top four is what Riley, Muzzin, Brody. And you think it's going to be... And that, that last spot, everyone's fighting for. Because uh, I hear yeah. Miko Lettinen's very yeah. good. I I th- it'll be Bogosian, to be honest. I'll probably pick... I don't even know if Bogosian makes cracks the lineup. No, he does. Okay, he well then, then Justin Hall's got to go. Because there's no way this fits in. Because, look, at, let's, let's see. What are the three for sure defensemen we have? Riley, Muzz, and Brody. Riley, Muzz, and Brody. Those are three you will have. In the starting day, we're talking about the starting day lineup. We're not talking about the whole season, just the starting day lineup. 
That fourth spot, let's just leave a question mark, right? Who are your, your bottom defensemen? Bottom two. Hall. Hall and... Dermott. Hall and Dermott, okay. So then you have... And uh, so Sandin potentially, but I don't think so. Okay, well, sure, Sandin and Mikul... And, uh, uh, not Mikul, and, um, what's his name? Who? Not Sandin, the Lilgren. Uh, oh, oh, also, he's in there uh, fighting for those spots, but, but, you're forgetting about two players now. Two players for one role, all right? You got that last uh, top four role, and you either have, in this case, you either have um, Zach Bogosian or Mikko Lettinen. From what people tell me, Mikko Lettinen is a top four defenseman in the NHL. He won KHL Defenseman of the Year, and the KHL is not an easy league. Like, it's, it's a step up from AHL. It's not the NHL, but it's a step up from the AHL. And he won Defenseman of the Year. So, you gotta, you gotta respect that a bit. I think, to me, I think the starting day lineup goes Riley, and I really, really hope it's Brody. I'm praying it's Brody. It could be, I, I could see it being Bogosian, because that's, yes. that's such a leaf thing to do, right? Yeah. Uh, just not give Morgan Riley a defense partner. That's the typical. That's that's like the thing that we love to do as in Leafs Nation. But anyway, let's just say Riley Brody, please. Uh, you got Muzzin. I think you got Muzzin Dermont. Right side. You got Muzzin Dermont right side, and then you got which is kind of scary because now you got your two, your top two right defenseman or, or left handed. But, but so Justin Hall has to be there. Or but then I think the bottom goes Sandine Lettinen. I think Justin Hall gets traded. Another scenario I could see. Um, someone actually left Bogosian. this in our comments. Uh, he made his own cap um, uh, cap friendly Leafs team, and he didn't have Travis Dormant, Dermot, or Justin Hall, uh, but he had Mackenzie Weger, who oh, so a trade you're saying? Who rumors have been. Um, Heating up a little with for the Leafs. Um, I don't think it'll happen just because I don't think that the Leafs will trade Travis Dermott and Justin Hall. Um, I just don't think that'll happen. But I, I don't think Justin Hall is going to be on this team. I'm sorry. I <laughs> the one player right now that I just don't really know. I don't can't see being on the Leafs team is Justin Hall. Do you agree with that? Honestly, yeah, I do. Because where does he fit in? Because I think. Yeah, Bogosian has to play. Like he just that yeah. pretty type of defenseman. Okay, what do we know? We know we know Bogosian has to play, and we know um, Miko Lettinen has to play because he, he would not have signed with the Leafs unless he was uh, promised to play. Yeah. So you got those two players who have to play, both on the right. I don't know if he'll start though. That's and you got and you got TJ Brody. That's three on your right, and you already have your two on the left. So to me, that just leaves Travis Dermott. Maybe he could come in the left. I think that's possible. I think it, I, want, I, like, I want to play this, the where he wants to play, but I don't know if it's gonna happen. Realistically, this is the lineup the Leafs are gonna go for. I will predict this to this day. The Leafs, the starting defenseman lineup for next season, first game, first game, whenever it happens, first game. This is the lineup. Ready? It goes Riley Bogosian because I know they're gonna do that. It's gonna go Muzzin Brody. For Which honestly, Muzzin Brody is very good pairing. Okay, but sure, I but I just want to see what Riley could do. You know, I just want to see what he could do. Anyway, that's your top four. And I think it goes Dermot Lettinen. And I think Justin Hall gets traded or something. I don't know. Dubas said he wants to be. And I think Sandine's your depth guy. Sandine and um, Logan are your depth guy. Um, Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. After Sandine... Because last season, Sandine and uh, Logan... We're also our depth guy, but so was Martin Marinson, and Martin Marinson got the call over those two. Will that happen again this year? I don't know, but I really want the Leafs to say no. I love Martin Marinson, and I think he's come, become such a better player, but please don't play him in the playoffs. Just please. Just, it's all I'm asking. It's, like, it's not too much to ask, is it? I don't think so. Anyway, that's my Leafs prediction defenseman lineup. That's the thing I, th- I that's the one I think they're gonna go with, but I don't think that's that's not the one I want. Yeah, I don't know if Miko Lennon is that him? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he'll He'll start. I I, I, yeah. I will bet anything that he this guy will be on the starting day lineup. One hundred percent. 
It's literally like the Ilya Mikheyev conversation again. Okay, true. I guarantee... People were saying last year, oh, Ilya Mikheyev is going to be in the top six. He's going to play with Austin Matthews. And no one's, no one even saw him play. They're like, whoa, they're like, take a step back. And look at him now. He's in the top six. I think Mikko Lattinen is also the same, t- literally the same situation. I think he's going to start in the, um, in the third, third pair. I think by the end of the season, I think he will be uh, the, the right side of the top four. If so Bogosian, right unless Bogosian right-handed? wants to play with Riley, huh? Yeah. Is, is he right-handed? Yes. Okay. Well, right-handed right-handed defenseman just won again. Defenseman of the year. That's a good thing to win. If you're if you're if you're a Leafs fan, anytime you hear someone won defenseman of the year, you should be very interested in signing them. Mm-hmm. Well, as long as we're getting, as long as we have those right-handed defensemen now, you know. Yeah. We did lack those. Yeah. Anyway, that's my prediction for the Leafs lineup. Um, I think this Leafs team is so cool. Um, I'm so excited for this season. Probably one of the best seasons the Leafs are going to have uh, in a long time. I'm just predicting... Hopefully we get some fans in the stadium. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering that today, actually. I was thinking, when is the next time you do think the fans are going to be like fully like back to normal? You know? uh, not for a while, but um, some fans were allowed in some soccer games yesterday, so... So not only soccer, the American football has yeah, had them, football, baseball has had them. Lot, yeah. But to me, it's it's weird because yeah. because hockey's a lot smaller of a stadium too. But the, it's just weird to have some fans in the stadium. I know. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, like there's like like what like like a certain amount of fans that doesn't fill your stadium. It's just like a little bits and pieces here. To me, that's not even worth it. To me, if you're gonna do that, you might as well just go back to the normal thing because there's no point in that. I don't know. I, I just really... I mean, you have to distance, but... Yeah. And also, uh, this is... Uh, it, it might happen in America. I think the U.S. I think the, the Canadian division will happen. And I doubt the Canadian government will let fans in. Just my prediction. Mm-hmm. So, anyway. Uh, Travis Sermon resigned. Let's just be happy about that. And forget about the possible trades that will happen, in my opinion. Um, Travis Sermon resigned. Leave your uh, leave a comment down below what you thought of the signing. If you think the one year uh, term was a good idea, hit that like, hit the comments as I said, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell on that subscribe button. Helps us out. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.